I want to know, when it comes to academics, does he realise just how much damage this one particular tweet from his girlfriend, current situation ship, whatever the name is, with that girl called Shay Glizzy? The Shay Glizzy girl, as you guys will know, um, academics unfortunately has been sued um, for rape and defamation from this one young lady that accused him and his friends of raping her one evening when she came back to his mansion after they went to some party somewhere with Antonio Brown. Now, the funny thing is, if you paid attention to academics, you would have known the story because during the time when academics was going through some passer with his girl, Shay Glizzy, on and off relationship thing, she went to socials and she posted this particular post I've got here on the screen where she said on her screenshot on Instagram stories, or when the house got raided because you caught a rape charge by a girl from Philly after you let the Antonio Brown pool party and me and your mum got put in cuffs and she had to go to the hospital afterwards. You ain't have to front door for three months from them breaking it just to get your nasty ass academics. So this woman putting out this screenshot was a was the one domino effect that led to academics getting on stream and essentially trying to defend himself against these rape allegations because we would have had no idea this happened. Allegedly, the police came in, they stormed his house, they confiscated the footage of his CCTV, bloody blah, blah, blah. Ultimately, it didn't lead to any charges because I guess in academics um, explanation, he says that his two friends were the ones that might have raped the girl, but he didn't do anything with her. And I think he showed her the tape and she was consenting in the tape or something. And I don't know I've seen a screenshot from the actual lawsuit. And I'm not going to lie. The screenshot from the lawsuit looks like she was very aware of her surroundings if that makes any sense i'm not gonna lie again it was just a screen grab from a from a fucking lawsuit yeah, from from a video it's not the whole video but i don't know if you can put again not to be crass but i don't know if you can put someone in that position under duress you know it didn't look like an under duress like we we know what i, I guess we can imagine what somebody under duress or under threat of violence would look like once they're getting raped and she didn't look like that in that picture that i saw so maybe she's just lying and it's all one big ruse. But regardless, if it's not one big ruse, could you imagine you losing everything you've worked for? When you're academics, think about maybe these days, people still look at academics like a loser, but I think he's kind of done well to, I wouldn't say repair his reputation, but he's almost done well to kind of, you know, give it another lease of life. But, you know, he wasn't looked at as the best way for a long time. He's done so much work to get where he at, is at the moment streaming day after day hour after hour youtube clips instagram account twitch constantly working plugging away in a very judgmental hyper masculine um whatever judgment judgmental fucking hip-hop industry he finally ascends to the top of the mountain and then he gets even higher right during the fucking kendrick and, and drake beef both of the most prominent or two of the best rappers in the industry name drop him in songs which then boosts his profile even higher it kind of represents a bit of a change to, you know in the industry because i think last time that drake beefed somebody i think that was meek mill um he dropped the song i think he might have dropped it on fucking funk flits or something right so those are when they supposed so it's always kind of like a change of of changing of the guard of seeing like academics be the one to get sent the dubs and to get sent the war tunes before a funk flex then just as you're tr you're reveling in that kind of glory you're reveling in that adoration bang you get hit with a rape and defamation charge from this young lady and it's all spurned and it's all coming from this one particular tweet that your ex sent out in a moment of anger but this isn't the only thing though she's done plenty of other things she's allegedly you know um hit his mom she said she's been on camera throwing eggs at his face she i think at one point she got his internet taken down or something i don't know if you guys remember that period where she did she mashed up the modem or something so he couldn't stream for a while she done that thing where she revealed that he was taking some sort of sti medication because he had bumps on his dick or something like that girl has been nothing but trouble but for some reason academics can't see it which is understandable again because he's a guy and most likely that box is fire right that's that's the kind of that's the kind of conclusion that most dudes have come to. Most likely that girl is so fired that he just can't let go. And I think some guys have been in that position where despite your common sense and your rational brain screaming at you to run, the box is so fire you just stay. But in this regard, like I said, he has millions to lose. Legitimately millions and also his freedom, right, is on the line. It just becomes 
you know, if this is true, it's going to ruin everything. And we've already seen he's very emotionally vulnerable. He's prone to crying. Could you imagine the depressive state it will put him in if he loses everything? Rumble deal, all this malarkey, Spotify, but Spotify's already gone, but all these big deals kind of go away. Record labels stop one are working with you because this one girl did this one tw this one Instagram story in anger and now you're out here on your own basically fighting for your life and already, he already doesn't have a he already doesn't have a good reputation online because people think he bullies women which I think is a bit of a false representation I think he's a little bit heavy-handed he seems to enjoy arguing with girls which I think is very lame as a man to enjoy going back and forth with women online but I think he does go at everybody equally, to be fair. But obviously, when it's women, it's a bit more high prof. It's a bit more publicized and shit. Well, the funny thing is, in the in the midst of all of this, academics made a very interesting comment that made me think, oh, I think this guy might be guilty of something. I don't know what it is, but this is a strange comment to make in the midst of you being sued for rape and sued for defamation, people thinking you did it. Uh, this is a very way, weird way to defend yourself. So Academics was on the stream defending himself. And look at the comment that he made regarding the whole situation. To me, it felt very odd in the midst of what's going on. But then I also thought about it some more. I was thinking to myself, if you did actually get accused of rape and you are innocent, how do you actually defend yourself without sounding like a monster? Like, how do you accurately defend yourself? How do you correctly defend yourself online without sounding like you're almost diminishing the accusation? You're not taking it very seriously. How do you actually defend yourself properly? Because this ain't the, I don't think this is the way, but it definitely is a way. But I wonder if this might explain why he decided to say this. But this is a very crazy thing to say in the midst of you getting counseled for rape. And I can't talk about it too much just because I've paid lawyers to handle court. And these people who are coming at me are hoping that I f that up by handling it on social media. The police wants nothing to do with this. They're saying there is no crime. The cops have said, peace. There ain't no crime that we could prove. That's what they've said. We're out of this. Do you know who's the lawyer representing whoever against me? Y'all know the lawyer? Who y'all think that lawyer is? Is it possible that that person who really seen the money grab was really the Diddy stuff and who was the biggest covering the Diddy stuff. That lawyer allegedly reached out to some people of mine saying, if Ack continues to doubt what we are purporting against Diddy, remember, we could file a lawsuit on him too. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this about everybody in the industry. I'm going to tell you all this right now. <laughs> if Ack ever goes down, y'all all go down with me. Cause Did you hear that? One more time. Y'all all this right now. If Ack ever goes down, y'all all go down with me. Imagine being accused of rape, having the girl come on camera and say what she said, having a very spot. And again, you have to remember the recollection or the how he retold the story of what went down was very dodgy in the first place yes the girl was the one that blew up his spot by posting this but she posted on instagram but then i also remember right after that he went on stream and he was visibly hung over with his hair all out and his face all puffy and shit from the booze and he was saying something along he basically tried to make it seem like he was asleep the entire time obviously later on down the line especially in the lawsuit i think it kind of says in the lawsuit in black and white that there was evidence um through a you know rape kit that he did have intercourse with this young lady so but he didn't let that be known when he was speaking on camera about it so now you're like okay if you had it and she's saying it was rape but you're saying it didn't happen you're not even remitting it happened there's something about a bit off there and then it's to defend yourself you get on camera and you say if i go down you all go down with me as if to say Oh, you think I'm bad? Look at what you did. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a good defense for rape. <laughs> if I didn't do it, I'm not going to say, oh, if I did that, you did more than that. No, 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 no. There is no scale. Oh, because you did seven rapes and I only did one, I'm better than you. No, like it's all bad. <laughs> and if I didn't do it, I'm just going to say vehemently and consistently and very loudly 
that I didn't do it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say I didn't do it. I'm going to f- fight to clear my name. And I'm even going to go as far maybe as saying is that I'm going to exhaust every legal avenue. I'm going to use all this money that I've gained from streaming and all this malarkey to make sure that I bring to justice all the people that lied against my name. That's what you're going to do. You should do those type of things to make it clear. Oh, shit. This guy means business, right? Instead of saying, oh, if I go down, you go down with me. Bro. So what? Are you saying that you did it then? Because other people, like, like what, what the fuck is that? What kind of defense is that? It's such a strange way to kind of defend yourself. And I don't really understand why he said what he said. But again, he could be panicking. He could be just waiting, trying to figure it out, make sense of it overall. But this also makes me think that this is to be expected, though, in a way. This makes sense, to be expected. Why do I say this? I think this might be one of the things that explains why these guys are such losers that they get themselves in these type of situations because they get money and it kind of allows them to have access to girls they probably never should have access to it probably speeds up their sexual experience relationship experience more than probably it should have and they get in situations that are completely avoidable because in my head if this is me personally going back to the whole story allegedly the story goes something along the lines of he's already out he goes to antonio brown's he goes to a, an antonio brown pool party with his friends they're having a good time he's getting really fucked up and then this girl contacts him i guess while he's posting pictures probably on instagram because you know how it is you show off online you're posting your stories somebody reaches out to you and then you want to continue the fun then he invites her to meet him at the place she takes a bit long to get there because she lives quite far and then by the time she gets there he's already leaving so he's already super smashed they go back home and he falls asleep. Happens. Happens to me before. I've I, I fell asleep before plenty of time when I got too smart. I'm not really the most, you know, I don't, I'm not the, I'm not the most um, strongest when it comes to drinking. You know, after a few, I can pro- usually go to sleep. So he goes to sleep and then when he wakes up in the morning, that's when he, the girl tells, you know, that that's when he sees all the stuff on the CCTV footage of his friends who stayed up smashing the girl by the pool. He then confronts the girl. She said she had fun. She said it was consensual and blah, blah, blah. And he puts it up online and then she obviously disputes it and they go back and forth. To a guy that's had experience or to a guy that's just well adjusted, you would never invite somebody. You would never let someone stay at your house while you're sleeping unless you're sleeping in the same bed. You know, we'll just let them, leave them alone with your friends. You'd put them in an Uber and say, okay, cool, I'm really sorry this couldn't work out or whatever. you will say your fucking goodbyes and you let them go. Or you'd make sure they all go out together, but you wouldn't leave the girl alone with your friends because you know what men are like. You know what your friends are like. You know what are gone. They all had a bit of drink. Like, why would you do that? Unless you stay up with them, they all go or she goes definitely by herself. So the moment he let her stay at his house, he opened himself up to trouble because imagine if they did rape her then you're still kind of responsible he doesn't realize that though he doesn't realize that he's kind of responsible for what goes on underneath his house underneath his roof so if you left her alone you didn't look after her correctly you you didn't do the gentle you didn't do the gentlemanly thing of putting her in a room and sending her home you didn't do the gentlemanly thing or making sure she's okay you left her alone with these wolves these animals under your roof and then something happened so either something happens consensually, which is also a bummer because if that's the girl that you invited to your house, if it doesn't happen consensually, you let this girl, you put this girl in danger because you were sleeping and you weren't really aware of your surroundings and shit. It's all fucking bullshit. So I wonder, and my hope actually going forward, maybe this will spurn the renaissance or like the change on social where we do a change and it becomes now a movement of gentlemen. Because I'd like to see that. Because I think I've had enough of seeing videos of Fresh and Fit or a video of these guys on these platforms where they invite all these OnlyFans girls on there just to kind of embarrass them and humiliate them on camera, make them seem dumb, you know, all this sort of malarkey. I've had enough of that because I feel like those guys and that kind of scene is why we have the situations we have there. We have all these, you know, inexperienced men get themselves in situations that are completely unavoidable because they think having money having clout is an answer to all things and there isn't such a thing as like i don't know decorum com- you know whatever there isn't such a thing as like class gentlemanly whatever attitude behavior that should also be at the forefront and not just like what you drive and what fucking what you're wearing so i hope as a consequence and as a result of all of this shit regardless of what happens there is maybe a move to kind of change things to kind of you know preach the fucking gospel of having how to be a gentleman because it's needed because clearly there's 
these guys need some direction. That's why, you know, the Andrew, Andrew Tates are so popular. That's why kids love fucking sneaker and shit. Clearly, there are men out there that need advice. I need guidance of how to, like, you know, deal with women and shit, how to handle sex and all that malarkey. But I don't think those guys are the right people to teach them. And obviously, their uh, doctrine at the moment is definitely um, not the best because these guys keep getting themselves in these situations constantly. It seems to be something along those, whether it's rape, whether it's an assault thing, whether it's kind of, you know, getting someone pregnant and making them force him to get an abortion. They're always involved in some nonsense that is easily, in my opinion, avoidable. If you really know Wagwan, if you've got a bit of riz, if you know how to treat people, like, like just treat people in general, forget even women, just treat people well. You wouldn't be in these type of situations in the first place, but they are. And I'm curious to see how it plays out. Um, for an academic, it's pretty sad, again, like I said, because the situation he's in, how he put himself in this type of position voluntarily is fucking dumb. Um, he's risked his entire hard work and career and legacy off of this one situation that he could have avoided if he just would have had a bit more sense. But now, um, regardless of what happens, even if he is found guilty, the smart of that being on your name is probably going to be everlasting, especially with his bad reputation, especially how people think of him. It's going to be a bit of a hard one to kind of come back from, but I'm curious to see if he does. Who knows? He might do.